So yes, I decided to paint one of the hardest colors ever as one of my last project pieces in our old workshop. So yes, you'll be seeing videos forward going into our new workshop that is going to be a hot mess and not set up. So we'll see how those videos turn out. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and share with you what I do to them. So in today's video, yes, I am sharing the hardest color to paint. And if you do not believe me, just stay tuned and watch this video. How many of you all have seen this type of item? Not that it's a swan, but that it's paper mache. Will you, would you normally pass up paper mache? Oh, but it's a swan, y'all. So the swan overruled that it being paper mache. And I thought, I know that I can do something with this paper mache swan. I know if I just went and painted that paper that the paint would just absorb in and you wouldn't really see the true color of the color I want to paint it. So I'm going to start off this project by spraying this paper mache swan with a couple coats of shellac. The first one's going to absorb in and then the second one is going to stay like a nice barrier coat. This is even out the prosty so when I go to paint it it just doesn't soak in. So how many of you all guessed white? <laughs> yes, white is the hardest color to paint, in my opinion anyway. So I am using Sweet Pickens window pane for the projects in this video. I love the unpredictability of the crackling and the chippiness and the way I'm able to sand this. Oh, I am quickly becoming a huge fan of this type of paint. So it's equal parts powder to equal parts water. And then I kind of am going to stir it, get it every it all wet. And then I'm going to use this little hand mixer and stir it for two minutes until it thickens up. It takes anywhere from two to 10 minutes for it to thicken up to get the consistency to stay on your paintbrush. Um, you can use a whisk, you can use anything to mix it, but... Yes, and it's really kind of fun to mix because it just aerates. You see all these yummy air bubbles in there. Just it's, just makes it so desirable and fun to work with. The ease of painting, I'm going to go ahead and use a turntable and set that swan so I can get all angles. Now that my paint's set up, kind of like a pancake batter consistency. You know, it's a little runny, but not too terribly runny. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with my hard areas to get first before flipping the swan over. Another thing that I like about this milk paint is it dries so fast. I'm sure because of the powdery consistency, but yes, yeah, see, so I've got that one coat on, it's nice and dry, and now I'm going to start applying my second coat. I'm not going to like, you know, like, oh, where's the crackles? Where is it crackling? It's really unpredictable, but I'll show you a technique that has been shared with me of how to help those crackles along. But anyway, yes, like I, I decided not to paint the bottom, just trying to make a clean line. Um, it's hard, you know, when you're painting items and you have to try to get that bottom, then you have to paint the bottom and then let that dry, then paint the top. And, you know, since the swan is really going to be sitting down, I just chose to just try to make a nice clean line. And a lot of times when you see the wooden ones, that's how they kind of are. They're like usually black or gray underneath. While my paint is still wet, immediately after I finish painting it, I get a heat gun. And this is where this really will help your crackling, like drying that out. So I switched over to my little bit more powerful one. My stamping off one was working, but I thought, okay, I need a little bit more power um, to go a little bit more heat. The stamping, don't get me wrong, my stamping up one does 
put off some heat, but this one does it a little bit faster. Look at how quickly, ooh, the crackles are coming. So you can let it crackle on its own. Just let it dry off to the side. You don't have to use a, a heat gun by any means, but I, I have noticed that it does... You can kind of pick and choose where you want some crackle, but still, even when you apply the heat gun, sometimes it does not crackle. I didn't need to give my swan a face, and I cannot believe that when I started it, I took a picture and not a video. Yo, darn it all. But anyway, so I just took the tip of my paintbrush, the bottom top of the paintbrush, and just did a dab for the eyes on either side, hoping that I was going to center them the same on each side. So now I'm just kind of angling um, the bill, the beak, up towards the swan's eyes a little bit. I um, like did a screenshot of an image on Google search of like, okay, so how are the bills on swans supposed to be you know everybody kind of does them so they are like almost touching but i thought that was a little harsh <laughs> personal opinion anyway um so i did not connect my eyes to my bills um but I, that that is what a lot of the images on google search said so but you know we each do our own little tweak of what we're doing i'm using fusions coal black for the color um, so I, I'm just really using the heat gun to dry it. It may, some of the underneath may, since it's been re-wet, um, with the fusion paint, it may crackle a little, little bit, or it may not. So now I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper, and I wanted to see some of the white age this piece a, uh, a lot more than what the crackling was just giving it. And can you sand paper mache? Well, I guess so, look at that. <laughs> yes, it quickly where it crackled, it takes some of those chunks off. I really want this to have that aged look and the crackles will still be there. This is just showing that underneath color. Oh my goodness, I, you, you would not, until you try to lift this piece up, there's no way you would know that this was paper mache. Now, milk paint needs to be sealed in, and I do not want to change the color. I love everything about this color. Oh, wow. So I'm just taking my air compressor, blowing off all that sanding dust before just applying some Verithane Natural Clear Wax just to seal this paint and y'all, does that look wood or what? So at the same garage sale I picked up that swan, I also picked up this beauty. And I do remember seeing this last year at his sale and I passed it up. He has lots of sales as a reseller, but yeah. So I was on the fence of how to complete this. Um, yeah, the tail's a hot mess, we can figure that out. But to bring out the beauty of this rocking horse. So the only comb I have in our workshop our workshop um yeah this is almost like a straw like material i can't really explain it but yeah the only comb i have in our workshop is a painter's comb to help clean your paint brushes but i'm like well that'll work you know and i know i you know you're it, it's yeah it's just a little bit of a hot mess and i know that it's going to be pulling some of that some of it out some of it's just loose it just is what it is, but i rather get it, you know, calm down, get the fuzz out of it, get the knots out of it, and make it look a heck of a lot better. I do want to protect it when I'm painting the piece, so I'm just going to put it in a Ziploc bag, wrap some tape around the closest to the horse's behind <laughs> to protect it. Yes, 
I loved that window pane color on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and use that same window pane on this rocking horse. Now, I did not seal this piece in. I didn't even give it a thought that I should seal this piece in, but I can tell as soon as I started to paint it how the paint was just soaking in. I'm like, it'll be fine. You know, that's okay. That's what, you know, with the milk paint, since it's kind of chalky, um, you know, it does look like that. So I just proceeded on painting my piece. Okay, it's not really showing up as yellow on camera as it was. <laughs> it definitely has some yellow undertone. So unfortunately, I am working with minimal shellac in this video today. I do not have a vehicle to run to my local. Um, if you watch the other channel, you know why I don't have a vehicle right now. Um, so yes, yeah, so I needed to seal this in because it was really yellowing and that was not the vision of the white paint I wanted on this. So I did two coats of the shellac and I really don't have a lot of shellac left. It's the only really thing I have on hand to prevent bleed through. Oh, goodness gracious. And I usually pick up a couple cans every time I buy it. But yes, yeah, so you can really, now that I'm painting the second coat, you can tell how yellow this rocking horse was. So as I'm working on the bottom, I'm taking the heat gun. I'm trying to help it dry so I can flip it because this is going to be its final coat. I'm not um, going to uh, put any more coats on here. So I want to make sure that my bottom is drying. If it's going to crackle, it's going to crackle. Um, but yes, before flipping it over. Okay, so now I have the heat gun. Let's see if we can get this to crackle. Oh, I'm sure there's like spots here and there that the milk paint has built up in crevices. And I know that, that that should crackle. And I gotta be careful with the heat gun because this one is really hot. I don't use it a lot. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't burn <laughs> too much. Yes, you constantly have to be moving it around. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's that y'all so be careful of those heat guns but <gasps> look at it look at it look at it it's crackling Can I tell you how satisfying that is? Oh my goodness. So I love the crackles, but I want to show more of the underneath wood. So I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper again, and then I'm just going to sand and whatever sands off is what sands off. But look at how that main. And so like where the raised crackle art is, you're going to be sanding that off too. But I really want to make this look like it has age. It's been sitting in somebody's barn. It's been in the weather. Um, that is the look that I'm going for. I know it's not everybody's taste. It's okay. Taste is personal. So yes, I just, I, and I love the way that milk paint sands. It sands so nice and smooth. It's easy to sand. I'm easy to show off those details. Oh my goodness. Now the thing with me sanding it though, and then like 
so with the swan, if I would have put the shellac on this piece first, I would be sanding and I would just be seeing the white paint. But because I painted, I shellacked, now I'm going to see a little bit of that yellow coming through underneath where I'm removing the paint. But you know what? I really think that's what really gave this piece its unique look. I mean, I know Bob, Bob Ross says there's happy little accidents, and I totally have to agree with him. Since I was giving my arm such a workout with hand sanding, I thought, eh, you know, I think on this flat spot I can use my orbital sander. And I did do a little bit here and there on the horse itself because, yeah, sanding is an arm workout, y'all. You think I'd have the biggest biceps in the world for as much sanding as I do. But anyway, I thought it would just be fun to, like, hit a little bit more of those details and save my hand. There again, I love everything about how this Distress It, how it painted. I don't want to change my color, but I need to seal that milk paint in just using some of that Varathane wax. And I have a waxing brush this time, <laughs> to, especially to get into all those details. But it's a wax on, and then I'll take a cloth to, wax, to wipe off the excess. My next one is on a much larger scale <laughs> rocking horse. Chris actually picked this up at a local antique mall for $10, and it had like multiple prices that were slashed on the tag. So it had been sitting there for a while, and they just kept discounting, discounting, discounting it, hoping somebody would take it. And he knew that I love to make these type of wooden pieces over, especially a rocking horse. So I think this is probably like that 1980s, early 90s homemade crafted item. And, I, you know, you see that pine furniture a lot and you see rocking horses a lot. Um, so I know you're like, what the heck are you doing? So the thing about these pieces is it has they have such crisp edges. They're so like board on board type. So I want to give it some age. I want to make it look like it was played with. It was, you know, a little kid dragged it outside to pretend that they were, you know, galloping through an open field. It, so I have my Japanese saw and that's what I'm doing. So there's like this really sharp edge, like it's a double edge that went around to take off the point of the wood. But that's what, I don't know, maybe that's what makes it be undesirable or it's the blue. I don't, I don't really know. I can see past all that and see what it can become. I love wooden pieces. I love rocking horses just as much as swans. But yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm just taking my Japanese saw and then working that wood. Now pine is really soft, so it does not take much at all to do what I'm doing. saw was working wonderfully 
But this has a lot of angles I needed to do that to. So I'm like, okay, what do I have left in our shop? Because there's a lot of tools at the new house, y'all. So I'm like looking over at our stash thinking, okay, this is really the only other cutting tool we have. And I'm like, will it work? So this is just a multi-tool with a cutting blade on it. And it, yeah, it seems to be taking away that sharp edge. Um, yeah, like I said, pine is really soft, so it doesn't take much to do this, but who did I create some dust? After I took a moment to sweep up that that created a lot of sawdust y'all so I'm just taking the orbital sander now I've created a lot of sharp edges a lot of you know I'll, I want to make this piece look aged and sharp edges is not going to give it that worn wood feel so I just have some 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander and that's what I'm doing I'm going to take probably a lot of this paint off I'm not going to remove it all that's not the look I'm going for because I am going to be applying paint on top of it, I just want to make it look like it was worn, somebody repainted it, and then we're just going to smooth this piece out. But of course, there's always those areas that you can't get an electric sander in, so I will just have to go in and hand sand certain areas. I'll go around and do the field test. The field test meaning like I will feel where I've sanded, fill pieces and parts, and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I just want to add some dirt to my piece so I have some watered down antiquing wax with a little bit of Waverly chalk paint in the ink color to do that so it just will give it where that pine is now showing that's really new new um, because I sanded it I just want to add some age to it so with just like the pine being soft the pine is really dry and it absorbs it right in antiquing wax watered down mixture did the trick look at how it added aged to that wood and the feel of it it is so super soft i think i achieved that age look but i'm using the same weather the window pane milk paint so and if y'all are wondering i really didn't mix up three different batches i mixed up a nice nice batch to begin with and then had all my pieces prepped so when I went to go to paint them I could do one right after the other.
So now I'm not sure if it was the pine or the antiquing wax mixture that I may I should have sealed in. I don't know, but you can see that it's got a dirty color to it. I know because I added the dirt, y'all. So I get it. I get it. But I have no more shellac. Nope. No more shellac. So I'm just going to paint right over the top of this in, in hopes that the next coat won't do the same. If not, I might have to hold off on my project till I can get some more shellac. But we'll, we'll just see. next coat does not appear to be discoloring and it did not want to crackle at all so what I ended up doing is just taking that wet paint reactivating the paint I didn't want to add water just plain water so yes yep uh, adding a little bit more paint, adding that heat gun, and in the hopes, as you can see in the belly of the horsey, that it did crackle doing this. Yes, on this piece, I really had to force the crackle to happen. If I would have just left it alone, there would not have been any crackles whatsoever. So to add some more age to the piece, I have 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander, and I'm going to run it along the whole horse so it's going to do that same thing as the previous project where you're going to see that grayish dirty color but i really feel that this is what gives it that authentic aged look so see how that just peeled right off and then you see that dirty underneath oh my gosh you know, at first I was like, you know, because sometimes you can beat yourself up going, oh, I should have, would have, could have, should have done this, should have done that. And then you set the project off to the side because you're like, I, it's ruined. I, I can't fix it. But sometimes you just go forward and see what it becomes. For me, I like being able to see the paint underneath. Like you can see the, sh the saddle, you can see the tail, the reins, you know, the whole thing. I like the thought that this was a piece that was aged till somebody repainted it. And then the thought that the paint had wore off over time. But of course, there's always those places that the orbital sander can't get to that I have to go ahead and hand sand. And the same thing, I like to do the field test. I just feel around the entire piece, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. And if it's not, I'll just sand it some more. I always say in the end of my videos have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way I should start saying have I inspired you to as quote a new youtuber that Chris has been watching to crack on to crack on and keep working through um instead of setting the project off to the side thinking that you ruined it just you know you've got to trust the process you got to trust that it will work out so Woods act differently, paints act differently, paint to wood acts differently, you know, just keep working through it. And while I was in the process, did I think these were going to turn out to be the vision in my head? Probably not. Nope, I wasn't quite sure, but there they are. They're exactly what my vision was for them.
So do you believe me now? Yes, white is the hardest color to paint. The unpredictable, is it going to bleed? Is it not going to bleed? Is it going to be okay? Is it going to all bleed? Or is it going to bleed in spots? Uh, you just, yeah, you just never know. But I'm going to take this as a God wink moment because with the milk paint, I love the layers of chippiness in different colors that that gave it. So what could have turned out as a mess or like, oh my gosh, look at this. This is a disaster. I can't find any shellac in my local area. I don't have any more in hand. What can I do? You know, and a lot of times you sometimes you just paint it. You just like, okay, I'm going to throw the white on there and see what it does. And then if it is a hot mess and it's not a pretty color, and then you just kind of deal with it, you know, so yeah, I had minimal shellac on hand, um, but I absolutely love, I knew I wanted to seal the swan in, but I, I mean, I should have known better that those other two pieces were going to cause some type of problems. They always do, but you know, I'm always in disbelief of that all. So thank you again for watching today's video and I hope I've shared with you to have shellac on hand um, to stop bleed through if you are considering painting something white. But I absolutely love all three of those. I will make over those 80s rocking horses anytime a paper swan. That doesn't even look paper anymore. And I was really on the fence, literally, of what to do with that carved rocking horse. And that guy had had it at his sale last year. So I know that it had been sitting there for a while and it was priced up last year or it wasn't, or maybe I didn't even consider that I could make it over, but oh my gosh, that has to be one of my favorite pieces that I have ever done y'all. So a couple of them are up on auction for eBay if you're interested, because of course the big rocking horse would be way too much to ship. But, um, if you're interested, pop over there and see what's going on. You guys, thank you so much for following um, this ginger chick. This is one of my last, last intros, extros, <laughs> endings at our old house. So this is a heartfelt moment. If you do not know what I'm talking about, we have started a new channel. We are moving, moving our workshop. So the, down in the description below is the journey. If you want to see us struggling probably to set up a new working workshop, it's a hard moment when you know like, oh my gosh, this is the last project I will be doing in this workshop. So thanks again for watching, guys. Thank you for being part of our YouTube family. Thank you for all the support. And thank you for those who have taken the time to pop over to the other channel and support us that way. We will see you next time, guys. You'll see us in a new workshop. <laughs> Oh, we'll see how that goes. Bye for now.